That's what's hurting in your legs. Okay, so we see this patient, he's in the emergency room, we see him, he has some oxygen on, he kind of is describing this just diffuse kind of generalized body pain, but also having chest pain. Um, and so, you know, you are the provider now. So I want you to kind of think about like, what are your initial thoughts? Like what could be going on with this patient? Um, and I'm gonna ask Jannie to share the poll with us. All right, so this is the first question. So based on these symptoms, what could be going on with this patient or what, what do you think their initial diagnosis is um, here? Just wait for everybody to answer. I'm gonna give everybody enough time to answer this question here. I see around 70 people have answered. I have 93 participants, 75%. I'm gonna just get it a, a few more seconds here so everybody can um, participate here with us. All right, so the quiz ended. Um, we'll stop sharing that right now. Um, I'm not gonna show you the correct answers just yet. <clears throat> All right. So I'm gonna finish playing this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start the video again. Was this typical of your usual sickle cell pain? Yes. Was it any worse or different? No, about the same. Okay, but you did have some chest pain? Yes. Have you been coughing at all? A little, but not so much. Yeah. How about your breathing? Are you short of breath or anything like that? Yes. You are short of breath? Yes. How long has that been going on? For like two to three days. Okay, and any fevers at all? Yes. You have had fever? Yes. At home, did you measure it? Do you know how high it was? No, 102. Okay, so I'm gonna stop right there. I just wanna share with you guys um, differential diagnosis. As I know we, we, we did the poll and I didn't wanna give you the answer yet, but I think we kinda of know what's going on with this patient right now that he has sickle cell um, disease. And um, so these are the differential diagnosis. So this is some of the things that as a provider, you would be thinking about if this was you were taking care of them in the emergency room. So we know he has this history of sickle cell. Um, he has, um, so he could be having a sickle cell crisis. He could have a, a pulmonary embolism or maybe a pneumothorax. Maybe he has um, pneumonia, but um, we did hear him say that he does have sickle cell um, disease. And so I just want to share my screen, um, a little PowerPoint, just a little bit about sickle cell disease, because I think it's a, a kind of a more complicated, um, more complicated diagnosis. And um, so just there with me. Okay, so we all should be seeing my PowerPoint now. Is that what you see on this screen? Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, awesome. All right, so sickle cell disease. So this is a group of inherited red blood cell disorders. Um, and we know that red blood cells contain, uh, contain hemoglobin, which is a protein that carries oxygen um, through the body. So. Healthy red blood cells are round, as you can see here um, in this picture um, right here on the right. This is a healthy red blood cell. It's round, it's kind of concave in the middle. And the difference between the two is you can see the shape. So people that have sickle cell disease, their red blood cells are shaped like this. It's 
sickle shapes, um, sickle referring to a C-shaped farm pole called a sickle. Um, but uh, so when these red blood cells travel through the small vessels, they can get stuck in clogged blood flow um, and that can cause severe pain. So we know our patient has just like diffuse um, generalized body pain everywhere, chest pain, um, but it can cause um, serious complications as well. That, and that includes infection or acute chest syndrome and stroke. So um, in addition, it's important to know that these, these sickle cells here, um, they, they also die earlier. So that can cause a constant shortage of red blood cells in people that have sickle cell disease. So um, the, the average lifespan of a red blood cell is like 90 to 100 days, but somebody with sickle cell, these sickle cells here, their lifespan um, is somewhere between um, 20 to 30 days. So, and then I'm going to show you here. I think this is a nice kind of picture that will shows you a nice idea of how it really does look. So here on the left, this is a normal blood vessel with normal red blood cells and they move freely through the blood vessels. And here on the right is this uh, patient that has sickle cell anemia. These are their blood, um, blood vessels and their sickle cells, CB, are more rigid and easily aggregated that can cause, block, can block smaller blood vessels right there. All right. So I'll just play it to the end. 102, not 100.2, but 102. 100. No, 102. 102, okay. Um, all right, well, we got you here on a little oxygen. Is that helping at all? Yes. Okay. All right, we're gonna do some tests um, and probably give you some medicines, but thank you so much for taking the time to, uh, to talk to us. Okay. All right, so we know he has sickle cell history. I'm gonna kind of just show you um, what his vital signs were. So patient history is a 28 year old male. We know he has a temperature of 101.1. This is in the ED. Um, his heart rate is 111. We know 111 is tachycardic. That is an abnormal heart rate. A normal heart rate is between 60 and 100. His respiratory rate is 18. I, I don't know if I agree with that. I think respiratory rates, um, I just know from experience at the bedside and working in the hospital, people don't really always um, count the respiratory rates as often as they should, but um, nonetheless, it's 18. His pulse ox was only 81% on room air. So 81% is way too low. It should, a normal um, pulse ox should be between like 93 and 100% or 92 and 100%. Um, and so that's why they put him on that nasal cannula or that oxygen. And his blood pressure here is 127 over 76. And that might be just a little elevated, but that's that could be you know normal for him, that blood pressure right there. Um, right, so I want you guys to think about this now. So now this is your patient. We have his vital signs. We kind of have a history of what's happening with him. Um, so I want you to place in um, just kind of start placing in the chat, like, what are you going to do? What kind of like workup are we going to do for this patient? Because he has this history of sickle cell, but we don't really know for sure if this is what's happening with him. It could be, it could be any one of these differential diagnoses as well. So what are you guys going to do for him? Go ahead and just place it in the chat. Like, what, what are we going to do? Uh, 
I'm going to stop sharing here for just a minute. I want to see what everybody's answers are. Yes, chest x-ray, absolutely. Um, blood work, absolutely. Definitely always going to do blood work, lab work. Um, uh, so yes, we are just kind of checking on, trying to figure out what's wrong with him. So what? how are we going to know what's wrong with him so we know how to treat him? I see some people are, yeah, EKG, of course. Anybody comes into the emergency room, has chest pain, you're always going to do an EKG first. Absolutely. Electro electrocardiogram, CBC, that's the complete blood counts, cardiac ultrasound, possibly, um, that would be something secondary, but that's definitely a possibility, angiogram, maybe, perhaps, that would be something that would be secondary as well, but you guys are all on the right track here, definitely all of these things is what um, what we would be doing for him just to kind of get a better idea, a more clear picture of what's happening with our patient. Um, so I'm going to share my screen again. I want to show you guys. What they did. So here we have, right, complete blood count. So we did blood work. We can see here his white blood cell count is 23.5, and that's elevated. Um, white blood cell count should be under, well, depending, like around under 15,000. We have the, right, the red blood cells, um, 2.1, that's low, um, out of range. His hemoglobin and hematocrit as well are definitely low. Um, just remember that we did, that we that our patient did report having a fever. So we would suspect perhaps that he has some type of infection, especially with a white blood cell count being elevated. And we also know that with, um, we also know that with uh, a sickle cell, person with a history of sickle cell disease that those red blood cells die off much earlier. Their lifespan is much shorter than a normal one. So we would expect them to have him to have a low red blood cell count and a low hemoglobin because hemoglobin for the red blood cell is what carries the hemoglobin. So if there are no, if there are not many red blood cells, then the hemoglobin is going to be low as well. This is his chest x-ray. Um, and this is the right side of the heart. Uh, this is the right side of the lung. And this is the left side of the lung. Um, does anybody know, just out of curiosity, and place it in the chat, why the left side, like the left lung, it seems or looks smaller than the right lung? Go ahead and place that in the chat. Why do you think that is? Yeah, so like where you guys are going with this. If you said because of the heart, the heart is on the left side of the thoracic cavity. And so yes, um, that is why, because it's making room for the heart. And so the right lung has three lobes and the left lung has two. So that is why. You guys are all really smart. Yes, only two lobes. Perfect. So this is his chest x-ray. And what you can see here is right along here on this, we're looking at the right side right now. There's all of these little white, very faint looking and they're called infiltrates. Sometimes they're, they'll be called opacities um, in the lung. You can see them just very faintly right here. And it's also on the left side as well. So that would be indicative if you would see this on a chest X-ray or if you would read a chest X-ray report and you hear infiltrates or patchy opacities, you're gonna immediately think of, does this patient have pneumonia as well? Right, and then I just wanted to also share with you guys um, just what the normal white, like normal, um, 
a normal blood should look like if I can find it. Okay, that's okay. I was going to show you guys a graph or a chart, I should say, of what normal, a normal, the norms for those that the complete blood count was, so you get a better idea. But um, we at least we know that his blood work is abnormal, and that is the most important thing here. Um, all right, so let's see what he was actually diagnosed with. So they, so they did the blood work, they did the chest X-ray, and now the providers like based on all of that information, they are diagnosing this patient with sickle cell crisis and acute chest syndrome. So in the beginning, when we did our first poll, if you chose, I think most people chose sickle cell crisis, some people chose acute chest syndrome, um, some people chose pneumonia, and actually all of those things are correct. Um, so this was kind of a trick question. The only, the only, uh, diagnosis out of those four in the first poll that was not part of his diagnosis was that pneumothorax, which he does not have. So uh, if you picked any of these, you are right. I want to um, bring up my PowerPoint again, because I want to show you a little bit more about acute chest syndrome. So what is acute chest syndrome? And it's a complication of sickle cell disease. Um, and it involves chest pain, cough, fever, low oxygen levels, and abnormal substances accumulating, accumulating in the lungs that we saw on that chest x-ray lung infiltrate. So our patient has all of these things. He has the chest pain. He endorsed a, a mild cough. He definitely has a fever. He had that low, those low oxygen levels. And he also had those lung infiltrates or patchy opacities in the lung. People will call them different things. Um, so this patient's pretty sick. I mean, the, can, this condition can progress quickly and it is the most common cause of hospitalization and death in people with sickle cell disease. So he is pretty sick and this is um, pretty serious for him. And then moving along, so what causes this acute chest syndrome? So I think that this, the scientists aren't entirely sure, um, but it can be any number, it can be any one or all of these factors. Um, bone marrow necrosis, um, and we know that that bone marrow is spongy tissue inside most of our bones, and if bone marrow dies, um, those particles can travel into your blood and circulate. And those particles can reach your lungs and that may contribute to acute, acute chest syndrome. A fat embolism, bone marrow necrosis again can cause a fat embolism. And this um, is when a piece of that fat gets stuck in the blood vessel and blocks blood flow. Um, infection, so infections such as viral or bacterial pneumonia can cause acute chest syndrome. And then in children, just infection. I'm sorry. That turned down. Um, so may cause uh, in adults, this complication is often caused by fat embolism. Um, but in children, infection is the most common cause of acute chest syndrome. And that's with children that have um, sickle cell disease. And I guess that makes sense because I feel like kids and children are sick a lot. I mean, going to school and daycare, um, they are around germs a whole lot. So that makes um, a lot of sense to me there. Um, so now I wanna know, we know all of these things now. So we know he has this acute chest syndrome. He has, um, that we know he's in this sickle cell crisis. So what are we going to do for him? You're the provider. So how are we gonna treat him? And I want you guys to place all of your answers in the chat and we'll talk about them, but how are we going to treat this patients and how are we gonna get him better?
Go ahead and place it in the chat. What are we gonna do for him? I see things coming in. I see antibiotics. What else are we gonna do for him? Continue with oxygen, of course. Treat the infection, blood thinner, yep, yep. You guys are on the right track. You're also very smart and you're thinking gene therapy. That's interesting, yeah. Um, lung treatments, all the blood transfusion. Yes, definitely. You guys are on the right track. I like how you're thinking. Awesome. Yes. I think we're all on the right track here. Bronchiodilator. Yes. That would be helpful as well. Of course, anybody that is having uh, difficulty breathing or has pneumonia, bronchiodilator might help them as well. Perfect. All right. All right, so let's go back. And I want to show you that the standards of care. So suggested treatment for somebody and a generalization is what a standard of care is. So like generalization for a diagnosis of sickle cell disease that kind of across the board. Um, yes, we're gonna do oxygen. We're gonna do antibiotics, especially if the white blood cell count is elevated and then we also know that he had pneumonia or these patchy infiltrates that were on his um, um, chest X-ray. Um, tra blood transfusion as well, of course, yes, because his uh, white his red blood cell count was definitely um, low and out of range, and so was his hemoglobin and um, his hematocrit. So I'm sure he's feeling pretty tired. Most patients that, that have a low hemoglobin or H and H hemoglobin and hematocrit count usually are pretty tired, um, generally just not feeling well overall. So those are the suggested treatment or standards of care. Um, and I wanna see what they actually did for this patient. So this is really what they did. So they, of course, they gave him oxygen. They gave him some fluids, um, antibiotics. They gave him a blood transfusion and nebulizer. So I saw all of these in the chat. Um, you guys were thinking appropriately along the right, um, thinking about all the right things. And then of course, this patient was admitted to the hospital as well. Um, and then just some key points and editorial. So I just want to show you like these were, this is what they did treat this patient with. Um, but some things to remember is that something to remember that's important is oh, every patient is different, even though they might have the same diagnosis, whatever that diagnosis is, they, um, there can be, um, some variables in there and usually they there are. So um, just wanna point that out as well, that this patient, we know had a prior history. Um, he also was had been diagnosed with asthma in the past. Um, he presented with pain that was typical of his sickle cell crisis, um, but he also had this fever. He had the hypoxia, um, which is a low oxygen saturation bronchorous breath sounds. So we weren't able to actually hear or see that, but using a stethoscope, if you were going to auscultate and you would listen to the lungs and you would always listen to the lungs of somebody who is complaining of chest pain or shortness of breath, you would hear bronchorous uh, breath sounds. He had those infiltrates on his chest x-ray. So um, something to keep in mind is that a, a chest x-ray should be performed on all patients with this sickle cell history, with the fever, with chest pain, with the decreased oxygen saturation and any type of respiratory symptoms. Um, and again, we know that he was treated with oxygen, fluids, broad spectrum antibiotics for pneumonia. Um, and that is because they don't know exactly what type of bacteria is causing the pneumonia. So they're gonna, and they would only know that if they were able to do a culture and um, test the, the antibiotic sensitivity. So 
that can take a couple of days. So that's why um, they're just going to treat him right away with something abroad, what they call a broad spectrum antibiotic, kind of going to kind of cover anything. Um, and then they did the blood transfusion and then a hematology consult. Anytime um, somebody has a history of any type of blood disorder um, and sickle cell disease is a blood disorder, we're always gonna do um, a hematology consult. So the specialist can come down and take a look at them. And, and um, that's who we really want treating them and seeing them anyways, is the specialist. Um, and just, as we said before, that acute chest syndrome is an emergency with a relatively high mortality rate. So um, it needs to be recognized quickly and treated promptly as well. All right, and now I'm just going to share, I just want to go over some kind of statistics of sickle cell disease. So some statistics here that we can see. Um, so for a child to have sickle cell anemia, both parents, parents must carry one copy of the sickle cell gene and pass both copies to the child. And this is confirmed by a blood test. So um, in the United States, sickle cell anemia most commonly affects people of African, Mediterranean, and Middle Eastern descent. Um, and so a child would be, or a baby would be tested in the hospital when they're born if either one of their parents knew that they had sickle cell, um, or even if the parents didn't and it was in their family, then um, if the history was in their family, the child would then be uh, tested. We know the symptoms, anemia, episodes of pain, swelling of the hands and feet, and frequent infections and some of the complications of sickle cell disease, stroke, um, ACS or acute chest syndrome, PE is pulmonary embolism, organ damage um, specifically to the spleen um, and DVTs or deep vein thrombosis. So treatment, this is something that we didn't really talk about, but how do we treat this? I mean, we did talk about giving them oxygen and we're gonna kind of support their symptoms, right? So we're giving him oxygen where we did give him um, antibiotics for the, the chest, um, for the pneumonia. Um, we did a blood transfusion as well because his hemoglobin was low, but on a daily basis, most of these patients are on some type of medication or immunosuppressive, some type. Um, and the most common one is this hydroxyurea. Um, and, it, and he actually was on this and I'll, sh I'll go back and show you guys, but he was taking this on a daily basis, this medication here. I did see somebody put in uh, the chat when we were talking about how would we treat this, somebody put in their gene therapy. And I don't have this on here as a treatment, but yes, gene therapy is that kind of a new treatment that they've come up with um, for, um, for sickle cell disease, but also a stem cell transplant would is more common than the gene therapy for sure. And unfortunately, the estimated life expectancy of those with sickle cell disease in the U.S. is more than 20 years shorter than the average um, expected life. That, the 20 years shorter than the average. So um, that is not hard to believe, considering um, everything that. Um, these patients go through. I just will go back. I want to show you guys. I'm just looking for where it's he was on the hydroxyurea. Right 
trait here. So we can see in his history that he does use albuterol. Um, he does use Symbacort. There's, there's some of the bronchodilator hydroxyurea is what he uses at home and then morphine for pain as well. Um, a lot of times these patients are, they, they are on chronic uh, pain medications because this um, is so painful for them on a daily basis. So, all right. So that ends um, our, the case that we went through. I really want to thank you guys for participating.